And Jesus said to his disciples, Let us go over to the other side. Leaving the crowd behind, they took him along just as he was in the boat. There were also other boats with him. A furious squall came up, and the waves broke over the boat so that it was nearly swamped. Jesus was in the stern, sleeping on a cushion. The disciples woke him and said to him, Teacher, don't you care if we drown? He got up, rebuked the wind, and said to the waves, Quiet, be still. Then the wind died down, and it was completely calm. He said to his disciples, Why are you so afraid? Do you still have no faith? They were terrified and asked each other, Who is this? Even the wind and the waves obey him. This is God's word. Have you seen it? Dear friends of Jesus, the story about Jesus calming the storm on Sea of Galilee has a special place in my life. Thirteen years ago, this was a story from the Bible that I preached my very first sermon ever on. I was in my, my first year at a seminary learning to be a pastor, learning to write sermons for the first time, and I can still remember my first sermon theme. It was, Jesus saves his floundering followers. Doesn't that sound good? You can be thankful that I'm not going to preach that sermon to you today. But the story also has special meaning in my life for, for another reason. And that's because I face storms too. Not just like the storms that we had last night, but the storms of life where sometimes you wonder if you're ever going to be able to make it through. Do you face storms in your life too? Maybe it's heartbreak or depression. Maybe for you it's been alcohol or cancer. Maybe it's the sudden loss of someone you love or anger. I bet you, if you're facing storms in your life right now, what do you do when you face the storms? Well, here's one option. 500 years before the time of Jesus, the great king Xerxes of Persia decided to attack Greece. And there was only one obstacle in the way. It was the sea. So King Xerxes built bridges and boats, but the winds were so strong and the waves were so big that the bridges were destroyed and the boats sunk. And King Xerxes was mad. Do you know what he did? He commanded his soldiers to get their whips and whip the sea 300 times to teach it to behave. And then he took some big iron chains and he threw them into the ocean to chain it up. Do you think that worked? No way. Someone once said that there are mothers to dry our tears. There are repairmen to fix machines. There are doctors to cure diseases. But only God can change the weather. It's just that sometimes we still insist on trying. Maybe not to change the weather outside, but I know that you in your life often insist on trying to, to deal with the storms all on your own. Whatever storms you're facing today, I bet you've got a plan, right? Maybe you're down to plan like E or F or G, but you've got a plan and you're working hard. And how's that working out? Sooner or later, you, you realize that you trying to face the storms of life alone is just as foolish as trying to whip the sea into shape. Sooner or later, you realize that you thinking that you control your life is just as foolish as throwing chains in the ocean and thinking you can chain it up. Because you can't. So how do you face the storms? Today Jesus teaches us. Jesus had just finished a long day of preaching and teaching on the shores of the Sea of Galilee. It was a day when so many people were listening to him that he had to get into a boat. And he preached to the people from the boat out on the lake. Finally, when, when evening came, Jesus said to his disciples, Let's go over to the other side. 
I bet those disciples were so glad to hear those words. So leaving the crowd behind, they took him along just as he was in the boat. After all, the love of that day, I bet the disciples were so excited just to get into a boat alone with Jesus. Doesn't that sound nice? A boat with Jesus on the lake. This is what some of us like to do on vacation, right? It's just one little phrase that sticks out to me. It says that the disciples took him along. That phrase makes it sound like the disciples thought that they were now the ones in charge. They just took Jesus along. And Jesus had done his part, right? Preaching and teaching, but now that they were out of the lake, now the disciples took charge. And if you remember, a lot of Jesus' disciples were fishermen. The lake was their area of expertise, right? They could handle this on their own. It was like they said to Jesus, Jesus, you just, just sit back and relax. We'll take you along. We got this. It's just that our God is not a God who wants to just be taken along. And he's not afraid to teach us that. So we're told that a furious squall came up. You actually know the Greek word for how big this storm was. Are you ready? The storm was mega. What does mega mean? It was big. It was large and the waves were, were crashing into the boat so that it was nearly swamped. And I bet those disciples hung on for as long as they could, but then they couldn't anymore. That pride that they had, we got this. It was suddenly gone and its place was fear and despair. Storms in life teach us that we're not in control. And so finally those disciples went to their last resort. Who was their last resort? It was Jesus. So that Jesus was in the stern, sleeping on a cushion. The disciples woke him and said to him, Teacher, don't you care if we drown? Well, those are pretty harsh words, aren't they? Don't you care? One minute, those disciples were proudly thinking that life was under their control. The next minute, they were waking up Jesus and accusing him of not caring about them at all. From pride to despair, just like that. Does that sound familiar? Tell me if this is what happens in, in your life. Usually, we like to think that, that we're the ones in control. When life is, is going well, we, we think, I can handle this. We put God in, in the back. Sure, we bring him along, but just in case, we got this. Until, boom, storm comes. The unexpected happens. Then what do we do? We finally go to God and we say, God, don't you care? Just like Jesus' disciples, I, I foolishly waver from sinful pride to sinful despair, and the storms of life show how little faith I, I have in my Savior. One minute, I'm in control. The next minute, nobody's in control. Then I'm in control. Then nobody's in control. And what was Jesus doing as the wind and the waves beat against that boat? Now he was in the stern, sleeping on a cushion. He was sleeping. How? Because Jesus had peace, even in the storm. His disciples did, they, they practically woke him up. Jesus, don't you care if we, if we drown him? Did Jesus care? Of course he did. So Jesus rebuked the wind and he said to the waves, Quiet, be still. And the wind died down and it was complete. Come, just like that. Completely calm. One minute the wind was howling, the next minute the only sound was probably the, the drips of water dripping off the disciples' beards. Jesus cared. He really cared. And all it took was, was three little words. Quiet. Be still. That's power. Jesus, with those three words, did something that King Xerxes with those 300 lashes couldn't do. With just three words, Jesus did something that no meteorologist today, even with all your technology, could do. 
He just comes on. Even the wind and the waves obey him. Of course they do. Jesus made them, right? Jesus is the maker and the master of the wind and the waves and anything else in life. And when you realize how much power Jesus has, you realize that there's a different option in your life when you face storms. Pride is not the answer. Despair is not the answer. What's the answer? Jesus. In the middle of pride, I got this. In the middle of despair, nobody's got this. It's Jesus. Jesus turned and said to his disciples, Why are you so afraid? Do you still have no faith? Jesus expected those disciples to have faith in him, even in the storm. Because whether they realized it or not, whether they could see it or not, Jesus was not just riding along in the back. Jesus is never just riding along in the back. Jesus is the all-powerful God of the universe who has everything under his control. Jesus holds the world in his hand. Even the strongest wind and the biggest waves have no chance against Jesus' power. And if Jesus can hold the world, he can hold your hand. Just what you can do even in the midst of the storm. You can have faith in Jesus and Jesus can hold the world. He can hold your hand. One of the storms my wife and I have been facing is, is trying to buy a house. You know what the housing market is like, right? Crazy! We were living a thousand miles away. We, we had one chance to come to Tulsa and, and find a house. And we were so anxious. What, what homes were even going to be available that, that one day that we were here? We just prayed over and over again. God, the day that we're there, may just the right house be available for us. We got here, our realtor lined up 14 houses to see on one day. And we didn't like any of them. But on that day, a home came on the market for the very first time, just on, on that very day. At the spur of the moment, we asked our realtor if we could see that house too, and we, we squeezed it in, and it was, it was just what we were looking for. We put in our, our best offer, and that evening we found out that our offer was accepted. And we sat back and we said, how is this possible? It was a miracle. Well, it, it was God, right? It was all God. So I'm kind of embarrassed about what happened next. You know what happened next? Is I tried to take over. At least in my head. I took over. God had done his part, right? He provided us with this house and we could handle the rest. We filled out all the right paperwork. We've got high credit scores. We were blessed to have a, a good down payment. We could handle the rest, right? I wasn't consciously trying to put my trust in myself. But this is what our sinful hearts do. Right? Put our trust in ourselves. God has done his part. And so now we, we take God along in the back seats. Remember, our God is not a God who likes to just be taken along. That's why He sends storms into our lives. Some of you know what happened since we came to Tulsa. We, we weren't allowed to close at our house. We moved in, but we couldn't close. It's been one of the most frustrating things that I've ever had to face. It seemed like there's no reason for it, but there's absolutely nothing that we can do about it. And, how quickly the I got it turned into God, don't you care? Just like that, from, from pride to, to despair. This past Monday morning, our lender called me and she said, There's nothing more that I can do. There's just no way that we can do this loan for you. You're going to have to start all over. The sellers might put the house back up for sale. There's just nothing I can do. I didn't know what to say. I know the storms in my life, they show my lack of faith in Jesus. But you know what happened? 
As that lady was telling me all that terrible news on the phone, suddenly she said, I'm getting a call from my manager. Let me talk to him and I'll call you back. About an hour later, she sent us an email and said, This manager's been out with COVID for over a month. He just got back in the office today. He's just going to take a quick look at your case and then we can decide what to do. The next morning, we got an email. Everything was all cleared up. We could close the next day. Say, how is it possible? It was a miracle. But it was God. I guess God is actually in control. Of course He is. Did I have to get so anxious over those weeks? Did I have to, to think of all the worst case scenarios of what might have happened in my head? No. Even the wind and the waves obey Him. If Jesus can hold the world, He can hold your hand. But what if it hadn't worked out? That's what I've been thinking about the last couple of days. What if it hadn't worked out? It's easy for me to, to stay up here today and say, well, trust in Jesus. And because it just all, all happened to work out in this storm for us. What if, what if it hadn't worked out? Well, I hope I, I could have said the same thing. I think that verse that I chose as the verse of the day for today, where God makes us this promise, He says, when you pass through the waters, I will be with you. And when you pass through the rivers, they will not sweep over you. When you walk through the fire, you will not be burned. The flames will not set you ablaze. For I am the, the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Savior. God never promises to take the storms away. Actually, he promises that as a believer in Jesus, you're going to face waters and rivers and fire. And he's, he's not talking about swimming lessons. He's talking about the difficulties that we face in the sinful world. You're going to face them. God isn't always going to take them away. But God doesn't make you this promise. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. And when you pass through the rivers, Will not sleep over you like your father holding up his little girl in the swimming pool. God's going to keep your head up. In the midst of the storms, God is with you. It's how you can have faith in the storm. And here's proof. At the end of our lesson today, Jesus' disciples asked a question that doesn't get answered for us. The lesson ends with the disciples saying, Who is this? Even the wind and the waves obey him. But Mark, who God was using to write the Bible, he doesn't bother to give us an answer. At least not right away. Who is this? You have to fast forward three years to another day when strange things were happening in nature. On Good Friday, the sky went dark and the earth shook and the rock split. And on Good Friday, somebody gives us the answer about who Jesus is. Remember what tells us? At the foot of Jesus' cross, there was a Roman centurion, a Roman soldier in charge of the crucifixion of Jesus. And when he watched Jesus suffer and die on the cross, you know what that Roman centurion said? He said, surely this man was the Son of God. That's who he is. That's who Jesus is. He didn't just come to, to calm a storm on the sea. He came to calm all the storms in our hearts. He came to die on the cross to forgive you and me and all of our sins. He came to rise from the dead to give us God's promise of eternal life in heaven for all who believe in Jesus. This is the one who holds your life in his hands. It's the one who loves you so much that he already gave up his life for you. I know you're facing storms in your life today. I don't know when or how they're going to end. But I know this. Even the wind and the waves obey Jesus. And not even sin or death or hell could keep Jesus from saving you and me. That's why you can have faith in the storm. You can say to Jesus, your Savior, Jesus, take me alone. Wherever we're going, whatever the storms are, you take the lead, you, you take me alone. Help me trust in you. So when you when you hear the thunder, 
when you see the storms, remember Jesus' power? Remember Jesus' cross? Remember that if He can hold the world, then He can hold your hand. Amen. Let's say a prayer. Dear Lord Jesus, we see in our own lives exactly the emotions that your disciples showed. When things are going well, we get filled up with this pride and think we can do it on our own. When things go poorly, we're filled up with despair. We accuse you of not caring for us. And yet, all along, you remain the same. Our all-powerful God, who controls everything for our good. Dear Jesus, when we see today your power over the wind and waves, when we see your love, and dying on the cross for us and for our sins. Help us to put our faith in you, even in the source. In your name we pray. Amen.